Um, guys, this is really, really exciting and a little crazy because I've never had so many people on my Twitch. Yes. Welcome. So guys, these are some of the most incredible voice actors that I have encountered in Los Angeles. Yeah. Hello, Pop. Look at Jen roll her eyes. Um, <laughs> these are ladies that I look up to incredibly and I'm so excited to have them all in one space. We're missing Anjali Bimani, who is in Europe. España. España, currently. Mm -hmm. But we have Jen Hale, Sissy Jones, Courtney Taylor, Grizia Bajos, and Carolina Rosa. Welcome, Woo welcome, everybody. Welcome. Uh, so, what the box? The six of us, including Anjali, who's not here, um, we're talking the other day and we were sharing tips and tricks with each other. And we realized, like, there's nothing out here kind of like this right now. And so we wanted to start, hopefully, a monthly chat. Hopefully, if we can pull it up, yeah. I don't know. We wanted to, to, get together and have conversations so we could share stuff. And yeah. Cheese and cheese. Yeah. Cheese and wine. Absolutely. The, the good stuff and the tough stuff, right? Like, right. like, Absolutely. cause it's not always pretty, right? That's the one thing I think people forget. <laughs> There's we good days and bad days. But. We're always pretty. We just, the stuff inside isn't always pretty. And we got to like, I, I want to start first with a question of uh, some advice. And then I'd love to highlight what you are doing that is helping all voice actors all over the world. Um, you have given me a lot of advice in my life and I was wondering if, uh, what, what is that one or two pieces of, pieces of advice that you've held on to for the last decade or more that somebody at some point said, and everyone gives advice, but we hold on to some things tighter than others. What is that one thing that you feel like you always try to go back to because it, it keeps you sane? There's a couple of little tiny collection of benchmarks that keep me sane and happy. Um, be kind to yourself number one and have a good time. This is supposed to be fun. And also remember, like have that checklist of acting basics when you're working on something. And the other thing is, and that's, this actually goes back to this group. There's no such thing as competition. The only thing to ever compete with is the last version of yourself in a good friendly way. Competition doesn't exist. There's plenty of work there out there for all of us. Every single one of us could audition for the same role and we would all do a phenomenal audition and they would have an embarrassment of riches to pick from and it will land wherever it's meant to land. And there is plenty more to come. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude is a huge one. Um, when you die, you're not going to remember the. you're not going to lay on your deathbed going, that role was so great. You're going to remember these kind of moments. Like I hung out with my friends. I petted my dog. I, I went outside. Well, yeah, yeah no, but I, I do think that one of the things that stuck with me was uh, living in New York. I was like pounding the pavement and hitting auditions. And like, I was so desperate and so in need of booking that job <sighs> that um, I was bombing all of them. And one of my great director friends was like, sometimes you just need to back off and just be, right? Because we're not supposed to act. We're just supposed to be. When you attach yourself too tightly to how your dreams unfold, you run the risk of strangling that very dream to death. So oh, you have such point. a tight hold on something that you're not allowing the life universe, your own, just to open itself up to you and see what other wonderful avenues it could take you. You're so focused on it's got to look like that. It's got to look like that. It's got to look like that, that you're not letting it breathe. You're going to strangle it. I did that too, by the way. Yes. I, did that. We both, we, I think we've all done that. We all do it. Yeah. yeah. One time and he was like, you are so desperate to book. I smell it in your slate, which is the part where you say your name. And he or you said, say your name. And he said, <laughs> nobody hires desperation. If I smell it, they smell it. Nobody hires desperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a really big wake up call for me. And he was absolutely right. Your, your job <laughs> is not to do the job well, because by the time you get to the job, you're you're getting paid your job is to audition well mm -hmm. and that requires training and time and patience and uh training and more training <laughs> and equipment and training and training <laughs> and coaching and training it's a cuban saying lo que está para ti nadie te lo quita which is what's meant for you no one can take it away bam so i love that one so instead of coming it, it's kind of in the same vein of not feeling like a, like you mentioned, Jen, you know, the comparison or the competition with other people, what's meant for me is for me is what's meant for you is for you, what's meant for you and everything. And that's why it's like coming from that place of abundance and what's meant for you, nadie te lo quita, nobody could take that away. So just go in full heart, you know, uh, full soul, full spirit and do your best, work hard at it, but also let it go. Um, well, I always say, <laughs> uh, no, it's just yes to a different question. 
Whoa. Oh. Oh. So, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to rephrase. It's like when you get on the phone with the airlines and they won't let you switch your flight and you just hang up and you call back. So to talk to somebody um, else, talk to somebody else, maybe you'll give what you want. Um, uh, also, uh, my mantra is it's a beautiful day in LA and anything can happen. And it's true because, mm -hmm. um, and this can be, you don't have to be in LA, but, um, that, you know, every day is, is a, a possibility. Um, so I just try and kind of keep a clean slate because you just never know what's going to happen. But also, um, it's really hard not to be petty and worry and things like that. And when I feel like that, uh, sort of goblin of envy mm -hmm. on your little shoulder, on my shoulder, yeah. I make sure to, uh, I mean, my friends are the shit. And so like, you can't, it's, it, you can't be like my tribe are the people that I read against all the time and that I lose jobs to a lot. And mm -hmm. so, um, but it is like forced grace sometimes mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, you know what, when you start getting that little voice in your ear that says, oh, somebody's getting something that I'm not, you got to dig in deep and celebrate other people and yes. like wholeheartedly, like mm -hmm. just turn the car around. I think it's important to also like check yourself on what you reward yourself for. If you're only rewarding yourself for getting the job or, or, you know, winning that thing that you're after, whatever your career path is, then that's an, the, like, you have no control over that. If you reward yourself for showing up in your own head, like, man, I showed up today. Yeah. Yay me. Like, and tick that box, the tiny successes. There's a million of them every day. You showered, <laughs> you got out of bed sometimes, you know, like, like, yeah, well, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to go there, but um, what you reward yourself for. Yeah. How you treat yourself. That's the bottom line. Currently, I want to shout out what uh, Jen is doing with uh, Skills Hub because yeah. it's an incredible endeavor and you've been working your butt off and it's helping other voice actors. So could you please break it down for us? Yeah. Okay. So the URL is acting.skillshub.life. And I'm super proud of it. It came to be because as a working actor, like we audition blind. We're at home in our booths with no guidance of any kind, right? And as a beginning actor too. And I thought, geez, I wish I could just get somebody I trust on the phone for 10 minutes who's on the other side. Like either they've done it a lot or they're a casting person or a director and they can just tell me if I'm on or off because it's been radio silence for a week or two, you know, whatever. And so it was that. And then also for people who've never done it before, who just want to dip their toe in for a minute. Maybe they don't have the bank right now for a class or the time or whatever. They can just come in and for 10 minutes, hit up some, like one of their voice here, voiceover heroes and get some coaching for 10 minutes about how do I do this? Critzia, Sissy, you guys are part of the, you know, such amazing experts and you're on the site. Yeah. And the cool news, we're, we're in our beta period right now. So membership, which is only $12.99 a month, is free for two more weeks. Just come on in and check it out. And the cool thing is we've built this whole hub. Like we wanted to have killer coaches, which we've got people who've worked on AAA stuff in animation, games, you name it, anything in voice acting. Yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's acting.skillshub.life and go check it out. This this goes for like my life in 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 voiceover and outside of voiceover. I have found when I am doing the wrong thing. I butt my head up against a steel wall time and time and time again, and I keep trying to blaze through it and some obstacle consistently presents itself until I step back and go, okay, wrong path, find another way. And it comes together like a zipper, yep. right? That's the way it was for me for voiceover. I used to work in corporate, like I have a degree in business and Spanish. I do not have an acting background. I jumped into voiceover on a whim because I always thought it sounded fun. And it just worked, right? Same thing with my 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 husband. Like I did it. I, did it <laughs> I jumped lot. into I my husband <laughs> on a whim. <laughs> no, listen. I just I dated a lot of idiots. They weren't great. They didn't treat me great. I met this wonderful human, and we got Aww. married. And it was so. It's and you made it's two easy. wonderful humans. Yeah. Yes. So like like pay attention. Pay attention to the signs. I just saw a question. Can I hit up a question that I saw in the chat? Yeah. It's asking about responding better to positive or negative feedback. And they know actors who fall apart if the engineer says you can do that better. As an actor, you got to learn to take nothing personally and validate yourself. People need to be able to say whatever they need to say to you because they're, they're dealing, that voice director or that producer, whoever it is, is dealing with this massive load of stuff behind them that you have known nothing about. So what yeah. comes at you instead of like, yeah, okay, let's just go again. 
they could have been getting, they could have gotten some terrible news from behind that glass and it has nothing to do with you, but we take it so personally and nothing is personal. So someone just asked, you know, what do you do for voice acting if you have anxiety? We, we are humans who have anxiety. We have callbacks. We have, especially- You know what I'm going to say. You know, go to skill type. All the coaches are really kind. <laughs> breathe. You know what? I used to say, I used to do, put yourself in situations that trigger your anxiety on a regular basis. Practice being with your anxiety, practice loving yourself through it. Stop thinking you shouldn't have it first. Take that first layer of the onion off, accept yourself exact. That was my thing. When I woke up this morning, the bulletin that came to me, accept people exactly where they are, accept yourself exactly where you are. And, and just like, accept that you have anxiety, stop fighting it. And just sit with it and go be in situations and places where you're used to being with it. So when you go to the voice acting beginning or wherever you're at, you're used to it. You're like, oh, yeah, hey, friend, come on, let's do this together and use it. You know, you don't, you don't have to not be you. This is my new thing. It's like it's so like every human out there. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> you are the only one of you on the planet. And that, I know you've heard that before. But listen to me. You are literally the only one. You are actually the only one. Please don't be anyone else. There's only one of you. One day you'll be extinct. Be you. Thinking about a callback I had recently where I knew the creator and the casting director and the writer, they're friends. And I walked out of that audition and my hands were doing this. But it was because I was so in the zone that I was like, just like, vibing. I booked the motherfucker. But I remember thinking, that's so weird. Like I wasn't intimidated by them. I was just excited to be there and like literally like doing my best work. And sometimes that is it, you know, you're so connected that you're like, don't let them see that I'm trembling, <laughs> but I'm here and it's everything's good. sweaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what? I love that you all are sharing this. We have somebody in the chat, Heather, who is a scout at voiceover camp. And what's great about Heather is that when we start workouts or workshops, she'll check her phone and be like, yep, my BPM, my heart rate right now, um, my beast, it's like through the roof, 170 or something like that. And she struggles with anxiety, but she's fighting through it. And that's the thing. You just got to, okay, that's what I've got. Let's keep working on this because the more you do it, the less it's going to feel so heavy and crazy. Mm -hmm. And like you see here, even for us that do this every single day, there's still going to be those that is going to get you kind of in a tailspin. It happens. We're normal. We're, we're human beings. We're like, we get excited about something. There was a job that I was uh, up for. It was a very, very big role. I was nervous. I was excited. The director is a friend of mine. And when we had, we had like a demo. So it's kind of like a callback. They're like trying you out for a little bit. And when we had our first break, he calls me immediately. He's like, Hey, you're not being you what's going on. I'm like, Oh, ah, okay. Thank you. And he's like, Hey, you're good. Just do your thing. Just do be who you are. And I was disappointed in myself that I wasn't being my full self. Anxiety applies everywhere in life. I have terrible anxiety all the time. Um, I'm scared about 60% of the time that I do something. And so um, work or not work, it's really important to find some things that um, can help you get to the point where you can not be in like fight or flight. So if that means, mm -hmm. you know, talking to a mental health professional and getting some medication, um, seeing someone on the regular for therapy, uh, you know, any kind of like meditation or just, you know, positive, like guided visualization or anything. I have terrible, um, stage fright. I get nervous speaking in front of people. I'm nervous right now, even saying this, but it is so important to take care of your mental health. I really do believe in like, feel the fear and do it anyway. But my fear sometimes is so great that I think it takes a, a really huge toll. And, um, and, you know, you don't want to grind yourself down just kind of kicking through everything. If you can yeah. get some assistance, you know, um, to, to help you walk through life without that kind of, that kind of, you know, those butterflies and stuff, it's, it's so important. And I, and I used to think that I was one of the only people that was like this because I don't act like I'm anxious, but I'm anxious a lot. And, um, so just because someone acts a certain way doesn't mean that they are that way. And just because you may think, oh, I shouldn't be feeling like this, you're entitled to feel however you want. But 
I urge you, if you have any kind of um, issues that are stopping you from living your very best life, that you go and you find someone to talk to, you find someone that you can work on some kind of a medication program, um, yoga, any of that stuff, it's so important. I want y'all to give me an example of an audition for a character that you went completely against type or did something so not in the description that either made you feel rad and you discovered something crazy cool or you booked it because of that, where it says like high pitched princess voice and you're like, nah, I'm gonna make it sound like this or whatever. Because I think that sometimes those are the really insanely fun ones. Um, and I was wondering if you had those stories. I, when I auditioned for Lilith in the Owl House, the first time I got the audition, um, they spent a lot of time in the sides talking about how she dyed her hair and she like was trying to be someone that she wasn't, you know, she was trying to distance herself from who she was as a child and, um, you know, all of that stuff. So I uh, did it with a Russian accent. And then I started like this. And then when she got flustered, she went straight to her regular accent, you guys. Um, but just because I thought it was funny that she was trying so hard to be uh, uh, not a cloth worm. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, and, did uh, that stick within the show? No, but it got me to call back. And I made <laughs> the call back and they were like, hilarious. Don't do it. And, I was like, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, the rest, as I say, but uh, yeah, it was great. Sam, I, it wasn't for a, for an audition, but I had been called for a character. Uh, I work for Victor and Valentino a bunch on Cartoon Network. And so they just call me once in a while and be like, oh, we want, we have this one for you, which I'm so grateful for. And uh, one of the, she was this uh, big fat aunt, <laughs> like the, the on, uh, queen aunt of, uh, you know, in the, I was going to call it a molehill, the, the aunt. Ant hill. Hill, thank it's you. <laughs> right. Go and, ants. um, uh, you know, usually I show up, I'm like, well, so what do you want? Do you want like, what are you thinking? And then I'll be like, I was thinking this. And they were like, oh, we just, we wanted to sound like Sofia Vergara. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I do her so much. or like a version of her, you know, I dare you just have to talk like this. And, you know, like, I kind of was like, I said, I imagined her like this big drag queen, you know? So I like did this voice like this. <laughs> um, and then I gave it an accent. So all of a sudden she's talking like this, you know? <laughs> and she loves to dance with the other aunt, but she throws him around and stuff. And they were like, oh my God, that's amazing. But I was really glad that I like had fiddled with it enough in my brain before showing up and just being like, what do you want? Oh yeah, I'll give you Sophia. It was like, because I, otherwise I would never do that voice for anything really um and I think she's hilarious like that and so I was glad that they were receptive to it and sometimes I throw stuff out and they don't like it and that's fine you just move along but this one I was like oh they liked it cool yeah my favorite one I was working on Yuri Lowenthal and Tara Platt have this killer show that they did called Shelf Life where they were superheroes and Travis and Willingham and Laura Bailey and Liam and Ryan all those guys are in it and they were all various versions of of like action hero toys and I guessed it on there as a villain, villainess, who was called Killerina. So I was going to make her a Russian because she was a ballerina who was a killer. And I started her down here and I was going to go that whole road. And then I just this suddenly occurred to me, what if everything she says is here? And so I didn't tell anybody was kind of what I was going to do. And I show up and I'm just, we went straight to shooting. And I stand there in front of Travis Willingham in his big superhero outfit. And he's a large person. He's a tall man. And I look at, up at him and I go, <laughs> I go, hero men. And he goes, <laughs> he couldn't keep it straight. Oh my God. It was really fun. I, I had the whole time doing that voice was just like absolutely grating on your ears, but it was insanely fun to do. Yeah. And that's so much more interesting than the typical Russian, Russian. voice. Okay, I talk like this and I am a terrorist. terrorist. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us from Canada. Thank you for, I love you guys. You know I love you women. And everyone out there, thank you. Remember, please. Skills Hub. You. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Acting.skillshub.life. And if you go to HelpNet, look for look at Help's um, social media. They have a code. You can get 10% uh, off for three months. Um, it's yeah, they have a code and Critzia has a code for voice campers as well. So you guys grab a code from Critzia as well for voice camp and, um, yeah, acting.skillshub.life and thank you. And please you matter or what's the thing about you energy. Never mind, I killed it. Okay. I love you guys. You matter. Bye. <laughs>